I don't believe it. It's not possible. I didn't say it would be easy, Neo. I just said it would be the truth. Stop. Let me out. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. You know, a lot of times when I'm, when I'm reading comics or I'm covering the comic book industry, I feel pretty worn down. I think that a lot of times that's by design. Uh, by design by, by certain people and then unintentional by other people that actually end up, when I say people, other creators and maybe uh, media outlets end up partaking in uh, in bringing on this this weariness where I feel like maybe I've had enough. And I think a lot of people probably, you know, once you get agitated, it's easy to take these things into other parts of your life and uh, become more agitated. Me, l- Luckily me, uh, you know, what I what whatever I say on here, and I I, I uh, vent my criticism, or I lay out my my counterpoint to whatever it is that I'm talking about. I pretty much leave it here. Like my wife, she doesn't know anything about comic books. My my six year old read comics, but she doesn't read any of the stuff that I'm talking about here for the most part. And you know, so the vast majority of my my day is actually quite pleasant. It's me uh, taking care of three boys with my wife, you know, because I am a stay at home dad, but. Uh, I don't think everybody's quite as lucky as me where their life's kind of compartmentalized, where, you know, the, the family goes to bed and I do this work at night. I wake up in the morning and I start over new. And then when we get back to nighttime, the kids go to bed and I start this stuff up again. I may check in here and there, you know, to see if maybe there's a big news story or, you know, if anything's happening on uh, social media, things like that. But for the most part, none of this stuff really bleeds over. But it's definitely intended to. <laughs> And I, I think um, you know people are saying that you know throughout their lives right now you can't escape any of these things, and we've talked about this on the channel. You know there is no escapism anymore. Everything um, everything is going to be thrown in your face. You you don't get you don't get a day off. You don't get a moment off. You don't even get a, a minute off anymore. You don't get a you know uh, open up a DC comic or a Marvel comic for the a lot of times and get to escape all the 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 craziness going out right. now going on right now where there's so much division and people are so angry with each other i'm also kind of lucky you know obviously that i live in uh live in the philippines so i'm in a foreign country but it's not like the philippines you know we've got our own issues here you know there's obviously local politics we've got our own pandemic response going on and uh, you know everyone's having to deal with that here but for the most part i think my wife uh thankfully we are very different people but for the most part, we have the same kind of viewpoint on how to kind of deal with this stuff. We'll talk about the things. We'll vent a little bit, perhaps here and there. But the, for the most part, we're focused on the kids. And we're, we're very blessed that we're, we've been able to do that, obviously, uh, with, with everything that's been going on. But the idea that these things are all, like, coincidental like everything is, is being kind of turned on its on its uh, axis and being thrown in your face and trying to wear you down. It, there's there's no way. It's absolutely all by design. There, there's a reason that when you turn on a television show, you can't see, on very rare occasions, you'll see a, a competent father that can ably take care of his family and that his kids can go to him looking for advice and know that they're getting good advice. Say that like the kids aren't raising the father. That's pretty much how um, how families are portrayed in in Western media a lot nowadays, with with a few rare exceptions. Obviously, that's you know to kind of uh, break down the 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 nuclear family, destabilize the most stabilizing force in all of uh, you know of all of culture you know throughout every country. If you if you have a nice stable nuclear family. Like that, that, that's the norm, and that's where uh, a lot of people are residing in. You have a, a more stable economy. You have a healthier, like phys- physically, emotionally healthier uh, citizens, things like that. But that's that's not a that's not a good thing if you want to enact a large amounts of change. Because if people are healthy, emotionally, physically, spiritually, they're not going to exactly be ready to change everything, right? Why would I want to change anything? I'm happy right now. I'm in good shape. My, my kids are doing good in college. You know, my, I'm doing better at work than I ever have. So you can't really have those things. So you have to put in these kind of destabilizing mechanisms. And we're certainly seeing that. We've been seeing that through entertainment. And these things have been um, 
you know, the seeds were planted, you know, back in the 60s and 70s. That's that stuff's kind of been well documented. And we're really seeing the, the fruits of those labor as a lot of the media and, um, you know, and entertainment have really, it's really taken hold there to where, um, you know, these, these ideas and these new ideologies and this new idea that nihilism is, is the way to go, right? Re it, everything's relative. Relativism is, is the way to go. You didn't do anything wrong. You, you, that's what you wanted to do. It doesn't matter if you hurt anybody. You were only trying to help yourself. You're not at fault for anything. Everyone should just be looking out for number one rather than being good citizens and looking out for your neighbor, and trying to be as polite as possible and, and agreeing to disagree. But, you know, back in the day, you could have a barbecue with somebody that you didn't agree with politically. And you kind of dive into comic books. There's a reason that they're making wholesale changes to Superman. They're shipping him off while John Kent is becoming the Ubermensch. <laughs> we just had a, a funny uh, you know, video last week and a little bit of debate on comics aficionados. Whereas his father, Clark Kent, was the ultimate anti-Ubermensch. Now we're getting John Kent. He was essentially a 180 uh, version of the character. We're seeing a Nightwing, Dick Grayson going against a lot of his uh this character and his story his backstory you know kind of just veering off and going in a whole new direction because you you uh, these ideas are taking hold and you have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing because once people get weary what happens when people get weary once what happens when you get tired you get a little lethargical you know, your defenses drop and eventually you you don't want to fight forever right nobody wants to fight forever now, there are a few exceptions out there, people that really enjoy the fight, and it gives them great joy. But the vast majority of people, they don't want to fight forever. They don't want to argue about everything. They don't want to have to be told they're wrong all the time. And, uh, you know, that's why when you see um, with everything happening in comic books, and, and, you know, they'll be like, well, go make your own comics. Well, okay, I'll, I'll go away and make my own comics. And then if you, you go in and you're like, well, I guess I'll put my money where my mouth is. I had criticism. Let me go support this project. Well, if you support that project, you must be a bigot. You must be a this. You must be a that. How can we get this project pulled down from this uh, campaign? How can we get this creator removed from Patreon? How can we get this channel removed from YouTube to silence any type of dissenting voice? Even though they're always telling you, it was like, hey, listen, you don't have to come to DC. You don't have to come to Marvel. You don't have to read mainstream comics. There's other comics out there. Go make your own. What happens? Well, they'll, they'll go out of their way to, to try and silence it. You see that with a lot of... Uh, a lot of different things, you know, where they, you have the established like uh, techno, like giants out there, like Google, um, obviously, uh, you know, Apple, Facebook, and you have these like mega corporations that are the standard, right? When you want to go search for something, you pretty much use Google. If you want to do something with social media and, and uh, keep in touch with your family, if they're on the other side of the planet, that's something I need to do. You got to use the Facebook. If you want to be part of a, a limited part of public discourse, obviously you, you can't talk to everybody when you go out in the streets, but if you go on Twitter, you can talk to people from around the globe. So you got to go on to there. And then, then when, when people uh, start getting silenced, they start getting fed up. They're, they're tired of being uh, shut down. Their point of view being shut down and being said that this is a violation. Like you, you're you're violating community guidelines. You can't say things like this, even though you're on, only speaking the truth, or you're posting a, a dissenting point of view from an article, maybe a scientific paper that that doesn't exactly go in line with what's being presented by the media down there. And all of a sudden, you get a disclaimer saying, uh, you know, this, the, the the fact checkers say this is wrong. You get fed up with it. Like, well, well let me make a let's make an alternative. Perhaps, perhaps this uh, this everybody being on the same platform thing isn't working out. Maybe we should go somewhere else, and that way we um, we can all you know get along. You, know, you you go over there, we'll go over here, and we can all do our own thing. Well, what happens? Well, you got to shut down the servers. Well, what happens? Oh my goodness, it's time to shut down the money. Well, we know that the money is going through here, so let's uh, let's. <laughs> you know, the, these big giant corporations, they start attacking. They say, you know, you get servers shut down. You all said you can't process money. And these projects, they always kind of end up falling flat. 
even though there's an overwhelming amount of evidence that uh, a more traditionally conservative point of view, there's an amazing um, amount of appetite for it in entertainment. Anytime something like comes out, out with, with a more traditional a conservative spin on it into to television uh, and specifically movies, which they don't very often, they always do very well, especially if they have high production values because you're just used to stuff coming from like the Trinity Broadcast Network and well, what is that, Fireproof and crap like that. And they, hey, whatever, if, if you like that movie, I'm glad you did. But, you know, I want something more like The Passion of the Christ. A little bit higher production values, kind of cool stuff. Really good movie. And then, uh, you know, so what's Hollywood's answer to something like that? Well, let's make Noah by Darren Aronofsky. That has nothing to do with like, really the biblical style story. They, you know, they, they take some pieces of it. But then they, they changed it and it ends up pushing some like new worldview about uh, climate change. It was so strange. And you think about the story of Noah. You're talking, <laughs> you're talking like uh, you're talking Christians. You're talking uh, you know, Jews. Uh, we're also talking Muslims are all all know that story by heart. It's one of the most famous stories in the entire world. And they would completely bastardize it. And um, for a point, to, it's not about making money. It's about making the point, I guess, is, is what I'm getting to. And they have no problems with doing that. And it's meant to wear you down. Or when you watch a movie like, uh, what was it, Exodus? I think, was it Exodus? I think it was. They had all the, the whitewashing on the cast. This is like this is one of the most um, one of the worst retellings of the Exodus story I've ever seen. Now, a few years ago, well, I guess it's a few decades now. You had the Prince of Egypt come out from who was that DreamWorks? That's a really good uh, interpretation and retelling of the Exodus story. Obviously, you had uh, was it uh, the Ten Commandments? Yeah, before that with Charles Charlton Heston. So there have been some true tellings, but it's been you know twenty years and stuff like that. Because they're going to take anything that might look like it's it's built for this audience that they're trying to wear down, they're trying to just whittle away and try to you finally just make you give up. And then when you get to it, and you're like, thank goodness, I've, I've been wanting something like this for a couple of years now. And then when you, you get to it, it's it's like, oh, my, again, again, and you, you that's why when you open up your Superman comic, it's no longer about the... Um, an aspirational character. You can't have aspirational characters in today's society. And you think about a lot of the, the uh, creators, and I don't think they're all in on it. I don't think like Tom King is, um, well, I do think he's ideolo ideological motivated, but I don't think he's like part of like some kind of secret conspiracy. I think Tom King, because he's bought into all this stuff, is miserable. He's just a miserable human being. So if he's going to write a comic book, I do believe in my heart, in my soul, and I'm not lying, that his intention when he writes a comic book is to try and make you the reader, or me, obviously, I have uh, read a lot of Tom King and reviewed them here on the channel. He wants us to be just as miserable as he is. Wear us down. You need to have to see things the way he does, and that way we'll all be just as unhappy as he is. And we'll all have this super nihilistic worldview where nothing matters, there's, there's no morals, and everybody's just uh, morally gray, and there's nothing right and wrong, and, uh, <laughs> you know, every guy has has mommy issues, right? Every every man has a has a mommy wife, and all these weird things that most, most uh, people in America actually don't experience, but they want you to, because they can wear you down, uh, eventually over time. And you, you um, I don't know, it's, I guess it's a not the the best comparison, but you know, almost eventually you, you start um, relating to your captors, right? When when you've been when you've been held so long, and all of a sudden you start agreeing with them. Maybe some people really do experience those type of things, and obviously we're not being all held hostage. You don't have to consume any piece of entertainment that's being put out there. You absolutely get to pick and choose. But if you choose to um, consume entertainment in America nowadays, it's almost it's pretty much all one sided. Even the the conservative slant stuff, 
I mean, I, I'm sure you guys have all noticed as I have. They're all on the same team. And it's certainly it's certainly not on the side of the people. You know, um, I think that's become quite abundantly clear over probably the last 10 years. That sure, on the surface, you know, the, the, we're, we're, these two sides aren't aligned with each other. But certainly behind the, behind the scenes, the end state, the end goal are completely aligned and they're working together. You know, everything's shifting at the, at this, you know, at the same, to the same, same way. Now, one side I do believe is shifting a little bit faster, but there's a reason that old George Bush was the bell of the ball. You know, when he was out there on, on 9-11 and, and making some of those speeches this year. You remember during his presidency, you would have thought he was the devil incarnate. He was never the devil incarnate. Yes, they were going to criticize him because that's what the, the news wants to do because they're pushing a certain agenda. But he, he, I think we've all seen he was kind of complicit in a lot of these things. He, he's he's a, a part of that agenda as well. And, uh, you know, it's disappointing. So you have to keep the faith. You have to keep faith in yourself, keep faith in your family, and understand that you can't give up. You you, you can't be... Um, what is it? What in England? England's a weird country. I really loved living there. But they had some really strange ideas and laws about like how you can conduct yourself. Like if if I remember correctly, if you were in your house, like watching your TV, and someone like went through your front door and unplugged your TV and started stealing it in front of you, you could not stop them. Isn't that strange? As an American, whew. I could not get my head around that concept. As an American, you know, you you plot your six year and see what happens. But in England, they call it being a good witness. I called it being a good victim. And I think that's what um, a lot of media and entertainment are trying to. You, you need to be a good witness. I say, don't be a good victim. You you have to continue to put up the fight. You you don't get you can't let one side or one ideology dominate anything. You don't. You can't cede ground on these things. You can't say, you know what? I give up. I, I'm not going to read comics anymore. I can see what what's happened. You have to stick around for the fight and then object. Now, I'm not saying that you should go out there and buy 40 Marvel and DC comics a month, but when you see something and you know it's wrong, you should voice it. And if somebody else is voicing it, you should support that and let them know that they're not alone and let. You know, the, the more support that they have behind what they're what they're pointing out or what they're what the point that they're, they're trying to get across, you know, that there's more weight to it, whether they're going to listen to you or not. You know, eventually they have to. But you can't see ground on any of these things. You can't see ground in, in uh, television. You certainly can't uh, see, you know, you can't give up the ground in, in movies and media because they'll never give it back. It's like uh, it's like freedoms. Once you give up a freedom, you can never take it back. The, the government's just not going to do that. And it's just like when you when the government gives something away, an entitlement. Once you give an entitlement, something free to people that haven't earned it, you can never take it back. Because now, as far as it's concerned, hey, that was my stuff. Why, why would you take my stuff away from me? I was entitled to that. Once you give something away for free, you can't take it back. And once you... You give up a freedom, you could never. Re it'll never be returned because that's not. Uh, that's just not the way the world works. The government's all about. I don't know if you've noticed this. Is about removing your freedoms and kind of constricting people more and more and more. And uh, obviously, what we've been talking about here on the video. Obviously, uh, you know, entertainment, media, uh, and all these things are a part of it. You've even seen it in sports. You know, hey, the sports is the ultimate. Uh, you know. Joe Schmo next door who gives a crap about politics or whatever. I'm just here to enjoy the competition. Even that's been completely politicized. Now there's a lot of pushback and we've seen if, if football or, or uh, baseball or basketball or, or any sport goes too far on pushing politics so far in sports, the sports viewers will absolutely stop watching at least temporarily and will send their message. And you see, they always have to take a step back. Unfortunately, entertainment's just a little bit different because it's not ratings driven. You look at what happened, what's happened with all the award shows, where it's it's just like three or four hours of uh, self-congratulatory uh, bullcrap with political statements. 
that nobody that for the most part is that's watching agrees with and nobody watches them anymore and they still they're still making them so i don't know it's it's weird it's a weird place that we're in and i see a lot of people breaking down i see a lot of people tired and ready to give up and saying you know it's time to make alternatives and i completely i am completely behind that there needs to be an alternative to youtube there is, I guess, with, with Odyssey, but there needs to be something at all at YouTube's level because I'll tell you right now, as a content creator, this is this thing is bullshit. It is so hard to operate under. It is the one of the most unfair things I've ever dealt with in my life. But I'm not going to stop, and I, I know um, a lot of other people believe that way. There needs to be an alternative to mainstream comics, something that's at its actual level. There needs to be an alternative to the, the mainstream news media. People say it's Fox News. It's not. Fox News is, uh, yeah, it, it gives a little different slant, but they're, they're, all, like I said, they're all in the same boat. And until, you know, we, until we speak loud enough, you know, they will continuously shut anything that, that could challenge them down. And that's why you have to continue to support these things. Even when it looks like it doesn't matter what you do, because that's what they want you to feel. They want you to feel isolated. They want you to feel like it doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you believe. You can only, you know, accept what they give you. And that's not the case. That's why I'm here. I know that's why a lot of other YouTube creators are here to get the message out. And that's why a lot of these channels, and mine's, mine's obviously a little bit smaller, but a lot of these channels have blown up so, so big without without YouTube really pushing them. Uh, YouTube uh, will absolutely uh, push channels that push a cer certain point of view, but these channels blow up anyway in spite of uh, YouTube's best um, efforts to thwart them because people want that message and they're eager for it because you're not alone. I know we're all weary. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like I said, just keep, keep your head up, keep the faith, and you just got to keep on keeping on.